Hi guys, it's Lola OJ here and I hope you're doing absolutely amazing. As many of you may know, I am now a lawyer. And for the first time, I'll be telling you what it was like. Why did I choose law? Right. The fact is, initially, I actually wanted to be a physiotherapist when I was in college. Um, but then when it came to picking subjects at university, for some reason, law just really jumped out to me. I really loved English. I loved, I loved English. I loved philosophy. But then I didn't want to be like an English teacher. So I was trying to figure out, okay, what can I do that is really structured around like the English language, but is something that, you know, you can actually turn into a career. So when it came to picking subjects um, and picking what I was studying at uni, law stood out because I was always one of those people that could be really objective. So I've got a really open mind and I'm the kind of person that can argue something that I don't even believe in just to prove a point. <laughs> so I'm that person that's like, no, but da da da, but da da da, but da da da, but da da da. And that's not actually my beliefs. I just always try and show people that you can literally think about one thing in a completely different way. So law just made sense because you're always you know for or against and um, when it comes to like cases and stuff so that's why i chose law okay so i'm actually a barrister and solicitor of the supreme court of nigeria so obviously what that means is that i'm qualified to practice law in nigeria <laughs> so i went to law school in nigeria now all of my previous education my secondary school college my university undergraduate degree that was all done in the uk so i went to the university of hertfordshire for my undergrad in law I actually applied and got in and actually paid the deposit for College of Law in the UK but I deferred my entry twice and then ended up coming to Nigeria working for a while then going to law school in Nigeria so I went to law school in Nigeria but all my previous studying were you know was in the UK okay so is the Nigerian environment conducive enough or whatever to study law um like I said going to law school in Nigeria was the first educational experience I've had being in Nigeria. I did all of my studying abroad. Was it different? It was so different. I can't even describe it in words. It was like a shock <laughs> to my system. And I'm not saying it was all bad. No, there were some amazingly intelligent individuals in my set that I was like, okay, wow, you know. But the overload of papered notes, the dragging on of certain lectures, the emphasis on certain topics the opinions of lecturers those things were to me like I, sometimes a lecturer will say something and i'm like are they allowed to say that <laughs> like are they allowed to say that everyone's like oh you don't know university is worse and i was like oh my god so to me it was a shock like queuing for hours to register things like that were a shock to me waiting days to get like your card to Dude, go here, carry this form, go there, stamp it, go here, come tomorrow, stamp. To those, to me, I was like, why can't I just send an email or <laughs> something? But I appreciate the system because to be honest, yeah, to have all of us and for them to be able to at least, you know, they know who, they knew who we were. Like everything was kind of organized, but in a chaotic way. And I'm in no, I'm not saying it's their fault. I know it's sometimes, it's, it's, it's beyond, it's beyond law school. You know they're doing the best that they can and student affairs are amazing and lecturers were definitely really amazing but the formalities the process even sometimes i'll be inside the lecture where it was so hot i wanted to faint like <laughs> those things i don't think i can ever get used to it i don't think anyone should have to get used to those conditions but i mean it happens like i said we thank god we didn't die but um yeah is it conducive i mean many people are doing it but would i like it to change most definitely i really appreciated the the law school experience and they tried to make the environment as conducive as possible but i think there were just things that for me they're just archaic there's we shouldn't be filling out 100 forms to register one person i mean so just be prepared if you're going to law school just patience will be your best friend patience was my best friend like when i say the patience you'll have to exercise it's like no other it's like no other to do the simplest of things it can take days weeks um but like i said student affairs were really amazing so shout out to them um so is it conducive i mean you get by is it an ideal situation i think anyone that says it is is probably lying because i i don't think i don't think it is but um they're doing the best that they can so shout out to law school nigeria <laughs> 
Okay, people ask me this question a lot, like, you were in law school, or were, were people acting weird, were they extra? But if I tell you the honest truth, it could have been a bit of the opposite. Like, people almost avoided me. <laughs> I don't know if it's because they had assumptions of what I would be like, or they didn't know how to act around me. So I had like a few people that I used to talk to, literally a few, I probably, can, I can count them on a few fingers, not even one hand. Um, there were a few people that would come up to me and be like, oh, you know, I, you know, I see you on Instagram and I like your pictures and stuff. But I would say they were, they were a minority. Now, a lot of people knew who I was at school, I think. Um, but it was always kind of like, that's that girl from Instagram. <laughs> not that they used to ever like approach me when I want to take pictures. So I thought some people were like, just thought I wasn't just I just thought they thought I was unapproachable they had all these assumptions of what I you know what I would be like so they just never approached me but then some people were really cool and really nice and would just come up to me and say oh you know how's this how's that but most part people are very normal so I mean we're all studying the same subject in the same lecture so I'm clearly not that different so it was cool yes 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 I did have some special reading um, techniques that definitely helped Firstly, I'm not going to sit here and preach and say I'm like the best student. Did I attend every group session? No. Did I attend every lecture? No. Did I do every assignment? <laughs> Hell no. Now, I'm not encouraging you to do that. If I would say definitely do as much as you can because it helps when it comes to revision. You already have your notes. You already know the subjects. But I'm just saying based on my experience, I didn't do that. So my studying was kind of like I used to always read before the lecture so if i knew the topic you know they, they tell you what you know you're going to be what the topic will be i would always read not necessarily do the assignment but i did some of course <laughs> i'd always read and then i was very attentive in lectures like i was that person that my phone was in my bag i was listening to every word typing notes like i was that kind of student because i just didn't i didn't look at my phone like rarely would i look at my phone in class not only because they seize phones yeah <laughs> but also because i knew that before school and after school i'm busy so i know that i pretty much have only this short amount of time in the day to study so when i was in lecture i was i was like this like you know trying to listen to, to every word because i know i might not have time in the evening um so yeah that really helped and then when it came to studying for bar part two which i must say is like a it, i've never felt that kind of pressure in my life it is it's not impossible of course I, I i did it many people did it but it is it does require a lot of work and it is a lot of reading so what i did is i literally had a calendar a schedule you know i would make sure that i was covering a certain amount of topics from this time i would make sure that i was spending a certain amount of hours and that was like let's say two months three months before bar finals so i was very strict with my um with my with my revision i wasn't on social media for most of that time do not be don't be fooled because i posted a picture people may assume that this one she's not studying look at up is no i'll post a picture i would sign off sign off log out of instagram and focus on studying then that one month to exams i completely came off social media just because i needed to focus i didn't have i, I couldn't have any distractions so focus obviously you pray a lot as well <laughs> but yeah those are the those are the main techniques anyway okay mentally preparing myself for going into law school i literally tried not to think about it too much because i knew if i thought about it too much i might you know overthink and not do it so i told my mom i told a few of my close friends that, okay i intend on going to law school they were all 100 percent behind me it's going to be tough but we're going to be with you through through that process mentally i knew it was going to be a lot of work and i just i just told myself that I'm going to be resilient now there are many obstacles in law school there are many points where you, you just don't want to do it anymore but I mentally told myself that I've never been to school in Nigeria before so just kind of I didn't know what to expect so I'm not saying I expected the worst but I just kind of told myself that regardless of what would happen I'm going to make it to the end like I, <laughs> at every point I just said to myself I'm going to just do what they want me to do because I'm not going to be here forever. So just knowing that it's not forever really helped me mentally. I was like, okay, max a year and a half. That time will go whether or not I go to school or not. So that just kept me. The times I wanted to give up, I'm like, okay, you're almost there. It's not long. It's not long left. So just think of the end goal and literally picture yourself in your wig and your gown <laughs> and just know why you're doing it and just have that tunnel vision of, yeah, they're frustrating me. I'm tired, but I want to wear my wig and gown. I want to wear my wig and gown. So that's mentally how I toughened up for the experience. 
Mm, what part of law am I most passionate about? Um, I'm really, I really like, and I'm quite passionate about intellectual property law. So to do trademarks, you know, patent, patents, whatever you want to call it. Um, so intellectual property, um, entertainment law, because you know, I've always worked in entertainment. I'm indirectly in entertainment and corporate law because I love business and it's quite technical. So it's not really a matter of opinions. It's kind of a fact. So you follow a process and you kind of know the end result. So I quite like those aspects of law. Will I be in court or practicing anytime soon? Let me just say, I did not go through that stress for no reason yet, but I mean, there is a time and a place and a space for everything. Do I intend on practicing law by the grace of God? I really do. If it will happen this year, I highly doubt it because I have quite a lot of plans and law is the kind of, it's the kind of career that when you want to be a lawyer, you have to be very focused. You can't be doing, you know, be, you can't be a good successful lawyer and have your hand in 10 other baskets or whatever. So I do intend on practicing law, but not right now, probably in a, in, you know, in a few years to come, but ideally I a hundred percent do want to be a lawyer. I really, really do. It's one of my idol jobs, seriously. So yeah. Now this question probably is the question people ask me the most. Oh, Lola, how did you do this and do that and do this? The truth is it was very tough. The truth is I had to make a lot of sacrifices, meaning my social life was almost non-existent and time management, like no joke. My day, my weeks, my months were like scheduled, like hour blocks, like it wasn't a joke. So you have to make a lot of sacrifices. Will I advise it? Probably not, because you're gonna be very, <laughs> you're gonna be very tired. You're gonna think you're crazy sometimes as well, but I did it, so it's possible. But what, what I would say is that sometimes something's gonna give. So of course, when I was in law school, I mean, I wasn't probably producing that much content because naturally you only have 24 hours in a day and you can't do everything. So I balanced it, but at times other things like there would be at times content probably outweighed my studying, studying outweighed content, you know, it, there's no way I could give them the same attention. Hence why I logged off social media when it really came to the core of my revision. So I'm not going to sit here and be unrealistic and say, yeah, you can juggle, juggle them all. It's very easy. It's not. And sometimes you have to sacrifice one for the other temporarily, at least. Um, but time management, Brian Tracy, uncle Brian Tracy, amazing, amazing books and conferences online. He helped me, you know, figure out how to like section my days, my weeks, my months. So that really, really helped. Yeah. Was I in or where, whatever, was I in a relationship during law school or wasn't I cut out for that? Well, I wasn't in a relationship during law school. Was I cut out for it? Yes. Cause I would presume that if you're with someone, right, they should be able to help support your dreams and not distract you. So it, I wasn't not in a relationship because I was studying. I just wasn't in a relationship. <laughs> I wasn't in a relationship. However, if you do think that your partner can be a distraction or if you're not sure if the relationship is more stressful than it is supportive cut it out because i saw some people that you know and especially sometimes if you're an emotional person if you're trying to study you're thinking of what this guy did or what this girl did it's best to just you know just say i'll come back after <laughs> after law school because it's not worth failing over it's really not so yeah okay so is law school overrated that's a very good question um I think it really depends on your plans and what you want to do. Is it overrated in the sense of, is it as hard as they say? It's hard, but not in the ways you may think. So academically, it's not, it's not that hard, isn't it? It's something you can do. I think anyone can like study. I mean, it's not beyond anyone. I think it's hard in the sense of the technicalities, the formalities, the registration, the timings of lectures. It's like the things that surround and make law school are probably more difficult than the subjects itself. Um, so is it overrated? No, it's not overrated. But if you don't care or, you, you know, if you're being forced to do law by your parent or your friends, then to you, it's probably going to feel a bit overrated. But for me, it definitely wasn't overrated. Um, and I'm glad I did it. Okay, so do I for, do I plan on doing some forms of charity? Now, definitely, I would love to, when I start practicing law, do some pro bono cases. I mean, there are certain cases on, you know, sexual assault, you know, just a lot of things that I feel like a lot of people that perhaps can't afford, you know, can't afford um, a lawyer or, for, or afford legal advice, for example, I would love to to you know to give my time and my efforts and energies perhaps to certain charities to certain individuals that 
definitely need justice as we would say so definitely it's, it's in my plans that when i start practicing i'll definitely do some pro bono work and probably more focused in areas that i think need um, more attention like i said abuse of children and you know sexual abuse and stuff like that um so yeah i do intend to god give me the strength to edit <laughs>